Welcome to Redeemer Episcopal Church in Irving, Texas. We're glad you joined us today for worship and praise of our Lord. And I ask you to turn to your bulletin if you have one and turn to your Lord whom I know you have. Thank you.
This morning's first reading comes from Genesis, chapter 29. After Jacob had stayed with, his, with them for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you're a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel, and he said, I'll work for you for seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It's better that I give her to you than to someone, some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. My time is completed, and I want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob. And Jacob lay with her, and Laban gave his servant, girl Zilpah, to his daughter as her maidservant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you've done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It's not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. Then we will give you the younger one also, in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished out the week with Leah, and then Laban, Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual song for today is Psalm 128. It can be found in the book of Common Prayer on page 783. We'll read responsibly by the whole verse. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive shoots round about your table. A man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. second reading picks up in Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 8. Starting with chap uh, verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those that he called, he also justified. Those that he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charges against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? 
as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be of service to your gospel, Lord, and transform myself and those who hear me. And this I ask in the name of him who is the word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If a Israelite Norman Rockwell had painted the Thanksgiving feast of a Jewish family about 700 years before the star shone in Bethlehem, he would have painted the picture that you see in tonight's psalm. Passover feast with the Levites, a beautiful woman at the other end of the table, a table full of healthy boys. Well, maybe a girl or two. A groaning feast with lamb and bread and vegetables. The dad, it says in the song, is a good man, a man who fears God and does what is right. It's quite a picture. Perhaps you can see this early cousin of Norman Rockwell as he sings the song. And what he sings is a song about life goals. And that got me thinking about your life goals and my life goals. So what have they been? Most of us probably would include a happy marriage with a man or a woman that we love. Many of us would hope for and indeed desire deeply the prospect of healthy children and seeing those children grow up and seeing our grandchildren grow up. A fair sum of money would be good too. So the psalmist thinks and so the psalmist expects because he's a good man. But we all know it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes the children don't come. Sometimes the marriage is unhappy. Consider Jacob, who ended up after seven years of work with a woman he didn't want. And even consider poor Leah and Rachel, neither of whom can be said to have had a good marriage. One had all the kids in the world, but no love. The other had her husband's love, but for the longest time, no children and her sister's contempt. That can't have been a happy household. And scripture doesn't say it was. And I should add that sometimes, and you and I know this, if not in our own family, in the families of friends or neighbors, sometimes the children don't turn out well. How are you doing on your life goals? Are you still working toward them? Have they changed over the years? Now the psalm promises success, prosperity, and we don't forget that table lined with boys. But success and prosperity and all the young men in the world don't always lead to happiness. We would not be able to understand Jesus' story of the pearl and the hidden treasure if we didn't think that finding a great gemstone or a treasure buried in a field would be nice things, rather like winning the lottery. You wouldn't throw away the ticket if you knew you'd won. So back to your life goals. Now, in the second half of life, for some people, it can be moving from chasing prosperity or power or position to having meaning, to doing something useful, making a difference in the lives of others, doing something that changes the world or nudges it towards justice or new health or better streets, something of value. And of course, there are others who move to Florida and plan for parties and shuffleboard. But most of us, even when we 
were in our most idealistic first steps of adulthood. We wanted to be loved. We wanted to be honored. We wanted to be happy. Jesus says that the good news is happiness is found in following God and living into and bringing in God's kingdom. This means letting God's kingdom come and God's will be done, that's why it's in the prayer, today, this week, in my family. That is a deep goal, a central goal. And Jesus, with a range of pictures of what the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like, picks up those two a buried treasure and an amazing pearl. In the 1930s, there was an English woman who, in fact, bought a field and wondered about some very old mounds in that field. So she had archaeologists come and dig. Two of the mounds didn't have much, some broken bones, some bits of Saxon pottery. But under the third mound, the big one, there was a whole Viking ship in the midst of the ship, they found a ruined burial treasure packed with gold coins and ingots, Byzantine silverware, a whole set, sumptuous gold and bronze jewelry, and beautifully made armor. It was, in fact, a king's treasure. You know, she gave it away to the people of England. It's the Sutton Who treasure. Jesus knows that we want to find hidden good, to find prosperity. And so he uses this kaleidoscope of images because perhaps buried treasure or a big pearl don't connect. But perhaps a field with wheat and weeds, or a lost coin, or a mustard seed will. Or perhaps yeast, may. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like when a woman takes about 50 pounds of flour and mixes in a great amount of yeast and kneads it, and the whole lump of flour and water is transformed. When I was a young woman, I learned to bake from my mother. And I will tell you that baking bread is tricky. It's part science, it's part art. Some days, the temperature or the humidity make for wonderful loaves, and other days, you just don't know quite what you did. It was a little not right. And if your yeast isn't good, you end up with some mighty, hard biscuits. I learned the hard way the power of leavening. One evening my family was off on the farm and I think I was seven and I decided to bake them a spice cake. I put a whole can of all spice into the bowl because clearly all spices are better than a few spices. I left out, it turns out, any kind of leavening. No yeast, no baking powder, not even an egg. I poured it with great pride into two dishes. What came out of the oven was the hellish inversion of what Jesus describes in the Gospel. It had the consistency of two rubbery frisbees, and even the geese wouldn't eat it. But good leavening, well mixed in, can transform flour into things that, haven't you ever walked across a mall or entered a store you had no intention because of the possibility of hot buns or fresh loaves of newly baked bread? Give us this day our daily bread, and we mean 
as they did then, the good, fresh, tender, and chewy kind. Jesus is saying that when we invite God to be in control, to be the ruler and director of our lives, we can expect that kind of transformation of our lives from dry dustiness that doesn't seem to have any capacity to hold together into something rich and new and nourishing for ourselves and for others. And how we do this? The leavening is the Holy Spirit. It's the most amazing and probable thing of all. Paul tells us that when the Spirit enters our lives, and we don't know what we want or even what, where we're going, the Spirit of God asks God for us. God catches us up in the life of the Trinity. And like that pile of flour, we're transformed. We're made into something wonderful. And Paul says we don't need to fear anything. Not height, depth, angels, demons, being together, being apart. Nothing can get between God's love and us and separate us from that love. You or I may end at a table in a Norman Rockwell painting with our family around us. We may also end penniless and hated in bad health but always having done what God wanted and having made a difference in a place that God needed. But we will never end up alone. We will never end up unloved. We will never end up in any place where God's love will not reach down and lift you or me up into the presence of God himself with the power of the Spirit. As life goals go, ending up being loved by God and in God's presence, it's not a bad one. Peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all your people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For 
the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Olivia. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Granted in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all of our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are very sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated for a few announcements. Uh, next, on Monday of this week, we will have a special board meeting as we will consider some of the changes necessary for our school to go forward. Uh, at this point, we plan to reopen middle of August and have a hybrid situation of both in school for younger children and options of being in school or not in school for our older children. Um, on Saturday next week, please come by and pick up uh, pre-consecrated communion so you may join us at this service uh, with the Blessed Sacrament. I invite you also to Drop by a can or two of our box of food for urban cares uh, and to uh, consider uh, the fact that the poor in this town are getting really stretched. Stay in your car, wear a mask. If you'd like to support your um, gift shop, I invite you to uh, pick up a set of four masks. Uh, which uh, they are now selling. They have been made by refugees from 
the gateway of Get Grace, and you will not only support uh, refugees or Episcopalians and otherwise in your town, but these are very well made and will perhaps protect you uh, from our current pandemic. Please take note that we continue both a study on Abba's Child on Tuesday mornings and on Galatians on Thursday afternoons. If you're looking for a place to go where you can really relax in the woods and on the lake, I invite you to take a look at uh, spending a few nights on Lake Texoma. The cabins are open at Camp All Saints and uh, they have capacity to receive you, and there aren't many people up there, so you can boat and walk in the woods and experience the stars at night. Maybe you can see that comet that I haven't been able to see yet uh, down here. There's a member of the parish who's looking for an afternoon home health care companion. If you'd be interested in doing that on a part-time basis from 1 to 6, please give me a call. Finally, I want to ask if you uh, need them to stop by. They will both be on the, uh, with me as we distribute communion, but forward day by day for August, which starts next week, uh, will be available, and also I will leave some in a box on the school porch. So you can pick it up even if you cannot come Saturdays between 10 and 11. I want to uh, welcome our organist, uh, our guest organist, Sheena Hale, and we're very glad that you're joining us and giving um, Dr. Choi a well-earned uh, Sunday off. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm.
source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.